Hey guys, uh, today we are going to talk about uh, Confucianism. Well, one of the major topics we're going to talk about here with ancient China. Uh, and Confucianism is a philosophy of thought that was created by a gentleman by the name of Confucius. Um, you guys may have heard of him uh, from other areas as well. But uh, Confucius came up with these ideas and a lot of these ideas uh, influenced uh, a great number of the leaders of ancient China as well as many groups of people and in fact even some groups of people even still follow what his beliefs are even today. So Confucius ideas basically he was focused on ethics and proper behavior. Um, how you treat people, how you should uh, act in any given settings uh, should dictate what your life is like. He said that people should live their life based on two principles, the Ren and the Li. And the Ren is the concern for others and the Li is appropriate behavior. So all this stuff is kind of appropriate for what we even do even today. Uh, if you had concern for others and appropriate behavior, a lot of things would go really, really well in your life. And that's what Confucius believed. Uh, Confucius believed that everyone had their role in society and in order to maintain uh, good harmony in society when people are, is when people knew their roles. Um, if you were a farmer, that's what your job was. You were to be a farmer. If you were a student, you were a student. Uh, if you were a teacher, so on and so forth. Um, all of these things were very important to him uh, and he believed that if people acted within these particular areas. Um, a lot of things could be ended and not even possibly happen in wars, so on and so forth. Um, so uh, he was very much a believer of this and very much uh, stressed this as he worked his way through his life. After his death, uh, his ideas were spared by his followers, much like you will see when we get into talking about the world religions and everything else like that. Uh, more often than not, these things become more successful after the person dies. Uh, because their followers start to spread their ideas and their uh, beliefs um, to other areas. So that's where we kind of see with Confucius as well, too. Um, the effects of Confucianism. Before Confucianism, the leaders were allowed to choose who they wanted to work certain positions in government. So basically, uh, what is being said there is the fact that maybe if there was a king or an emperor of China, uh, they could appoint their brother uh, to do a job that maybe they weren't suited for. Uh, Confucius didn't believe this. He believed that the people um, should receive their jobs based on their ability to do so. And he developed this idea of these civil service exams in order for uh, people to um, basically, you know, earn their jobs rather than to have them given to them by who they know or what they knew uh, about a certain person or how they're related to a certain person. They had to actually physically know and understand the job in order to. Uh, follow through and take that job and be a leader within society. So it was very important and he, like I said, developed these ideas of these civil service, civil service exam um, in order to um, create th these people and put these people in the right positions. Um, like I said, civil service exams were um, exams that had uh, people had to take in order to become part of the bureaucracy and the bureaucracy is the body of unelected government officials. Much like uh, as we look at our president, uh, he has a group of people that is members of his cabinet. Uh, the cabinet is a group of people that are his advisors and they are not necessarily elected to their position. They have to obviously be confirmed by uh, the Senate in some cases, but there are people within our government that are working directly for our president. And as a result of that, um, they are part of what we call the bureaucracy. Okay. Uh, the exams tested uh, a student's grasp of Confucianism and related ideas. And then if you were able to pass these exams, these were very lengthy, uh, lots of studying in order to pass them, you could become uh, a scholar official. And these were the people that advised the rulers um, of these particular dynasties and um, had a direct role in the government. So, like I said before, <coughs> Hmm. Uh, scholar officials were educated members of the government um, and they were elite members of society and did important jobs for the government. Okay, uh, They gained a number of benefits from these jobs like respect, reduced penalties for breaking the law, and great wealth. So it was, it was a very important uh, position within society, much like any government position that we talk about and see um, even in our present day government. So, with that said, that kind of wraps up how Confucius had a major effect on um, ancient China. 
um, and it really goes along with many of the dynasties, uh, more specifically like the Han, uh, that really instituted the idea of civil service exams and scholar officials to uh, the people of ancient China. So I would highly suggest you know this stuff for your test that's coming up, um, and we will talk a little bit more about this later.